Let's talk a little bit more about this public key, private key, and public key token thing. From the last video, we have our cow here, and cow has a moo. Everything's good. I am a goo moo. I'm a good moo code. I am good moo code. Here's some code. I am we're going to give it a version of one. This version can be whatever we want. We'll talk about versioning in future videos. I want to compile this again to its own DLL and sign it. So let's first list the contents of the directory. You can see main class.cs is the only file here. I erased my public key, private key file from the last video. So let me clear the screen and create another key file. We could do this all day long. Uh, Jamie's key dot key. So strong name tool. Please generate a key file for me. That's public and private key and stick it into Jamie's key dot key. It grinds for a bit. And again, if I want to see the public key, I first have to extract it using the strong name tool again into its own file. So Jamie's Jamie's key. We have Jamie's key file dot key. I want you to extract the public key into Jamie's public key file dot key. Hit enter. Public key written to Jamie's public key. Oh boy, did I misspell that. Anyway, moving on. Uh, you can see we have our key file that has both the private and public key. If I want to sign an assembly, this is the file I will do it with. This file is just so I can look at my public key if I want to. I have to ask the strong name tool to tell me the public key from Jamie's uh, public key <laughs> dot key. Hit enter. We've seen this before. Public key, big, long, hexadecimal number. You can tell uh, this is one reason why we have passwords that are so long the longer the password the more cryptic it is harder it is to guess harder it is to fake so you can tell this is one heck a long password or or input into the uh, public key private key algorithm i talked about in the last video however when we reference assemblies say we reference 10 20 assemblies do we really want to store their public key recall that an assembly may name is made up of the basic name, the name of the assembly, the version we've talked about, and it's also the public key culture. Again, ignore this for now, but yes, culture is part of it. The part that identifies me from you is our public key. So if one assembly references another assembly, it could possibly store all of this information, but if one assembly is referencing, say, 20 other assemblies, which isn't completely unreasonable, that's a lot of public keys to go through. So when we reference other assemblies, we store their public key token, which is a hash built off of the public key. It's like a hash from a hash. Anyway, when we sign our own assemblies, though, we sign them with the entire key. Let's, let, me, let me demonstrate here. We have our cow moo. I actually need to save this. Looks like it's not saved yet. So let me save that and go back over here. I'm going to say C sharp compile. Let's clear the screen first. List the contents of the directory. I think we're done with the uh, pubic key there. So I'm going to erase Jamie's. Let's just, that's embarrassing. Clear the screen. We now have main class.cs, our code file. I'm going to compile it and sign it with this key we just generated. So C sharp compiler. The key file I want to sign it with is. Jamie, Jamie's key dot key, and I want to compile main class dot cs, but I want to convert this into a DLL. It's the same as we did in previous videos, so I'm going to call it farm dot DLL instead of fram dot DLL as we did last time, and we need to also target it as a library so that the compiler doesn't look for a main in here. Hit enter. Compiler grinds list the contents of the directory. Here is our farm.dll. Let me disassemble this thing. Ildasm slash out colon uh, meil.txt file and I want to ildasm the farm.dll. That creates the meil.txt file we've seen in previous videos. If we look at it, here is the assembly manifest. I've talked about manifests in previous videos. The manifest declares the name declares the version. It would also declare the culture if the culture wasn't null, but since, since we have a neutral culture, it's not listed in here. No, neutral is assumed. We'll talk about cultures later. But oh, look at this. The entire public key is right here. All right, this is what differentiates my file from your file. When .NET goes to find my 
assembly and wants to make sure it's not your code trying to spoof my code as I showed in the last video it will verify the entire it will verify using the entire public key and I'll show that probably in the next video we'll do I'll show you how dotnet hashes and ensures that the the uh, DLL was not messed with However, my DLL relies on MS Core Lib or MS Core Library. It's pretty much every DLL or EXE or any .NET assembly you create will rely on MS Core Library. And MS Core Library is signed with Microsoft's key file. But notice I'm not storing the entire key or the entire public key from Microsoft. The only thing we reference MS Core Lib with is the public key token, the hashed value off their actual public key. Now it is possible, but extremely highly unlikely that one that two public keys could hash to the exact same public key token. But again, your odds are much better in Vegas, so I think Microsoft's banking on it good enough that it's safe enough this is what they're rolling with. So no, I do not store the entire public key of MS Core Lib. I only store the public key token, and when .NET is trying to find MS Core Lib, it will look for MS Core Lib version 4.0, with this public key token. However, as a further step, which I'll show in the next video, Microsoft does verify the contents of MS Core Lib using the entire public key within MS Core Lib. But I'll show that using our farm DLL in the next video. I wanna I wanna actually compile something against the farm DLL just like we did in the last video. Let's uh, go down here. I still have main class down here, so I'm gonna comment this in, <laughs> bring it in and comment this part out, uh, save the file, bring the console back up here, clear the screen, csc slash reference farm.dll and compile main class.cs, hit enter, list the contents of the directory just like we had in the last video, we now have main class.exe which relies on this farm assembly, we can execute main class, main class, .exe, and we see this is good moo code. Let me ildasm slash out uh, moo.txt main class dot exe. Let's look at moo.txt. Bring that up and we can see that main class also relies on MS Core Lib uh, with the public key token of B77A yada 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 version 4. But in addition it also relies on the farm assembly version one. We said it was version one when we when we had our assembly version here. Version one, and then here is the public key token of farm. It is not the entire public key of farm, as we as we saw when we uh, looked at the farm. Here's the farm's disassembled code. The farm stores its entire public key, but when we reference the farm, we only store the public key token to keep things simple over here and that sort of thing. But storing the public key in the actual assembly it does not go to waste. This is the key that's used when .NET verifies that the assembly has not been tampered with, which we will examine in the next video.